How's it going? Doing the nutrient and pH levels of the water in the aquaponics today, so I thought I'd bring you along and show you how it's done. Uh, just quickly, for those who are not quite in the know about how aquaponics works, what we're basically doing is changing the waste from fish, primarily ammonia, into nitrites, and then from nitrites into nitrates, which is taken up by the plants. We had no chemicals to make the change from ammonia to nitrites, nitrites to nitrates. Naturally occurring bacteria inhabit the grow media in your beds, in our case little clay balls, in other beds, gravel, rock, whatever, and they actually look after the change from ammonia to nitrites to nitrates all by themselves. The problem is though, sometimes you can have spikes in ammonia, which is toxic to your fish, and nitrites, to a lesser extent, can also be toxic to fish. So it's a good idea every month or so, once your system's up and running, to test for these things, just to give you an idea on how your system's travelling. Um, I won't get into different causes and bits and pieces on what can make the levels fluctuate, because to be totally honest, I'm still new at this, and I don't want to give out any misinformation, so I'm just sort of showing you how we do the test today. Yeah, so what am I using to do the test? Well, I'm using the API Freshwater Test Kit. Um, I'm not flogging a brand or anything, it's just the one that seems to be most accurate for most people. I'm not using their pH test though. I had problems with their pH test in the past, and I wasn't getting accurate readings, so I'm not dissing API. I might have got a dodgy set of chemicals from the people we bought it from. Uh, they might have been heat affected, I don't know. I just didn't trust them, so... I went out and bought some test tape and that seems to work all right and then I splurged and bought a test pen so that's what I'll be using today a test pen. Uh, for people who want to know I'm using a HANA HI98127 test pen so that's for pH and temperature as well. So to begin with what we do is we fill up these little test samples with water to there's a little line here. That line there indicates five mil of water. I've actually rinsed these test tubes out a fair bit with the water from the aquaponics so we're going to get a true as we can reading. I don't want to use any detergents or any other chemicals in there because it may skew the reading somewhat. Just to let you know I take the water samples from the water coming directly from the fish tank so that should give us the highest readings of ammonia available so that's the one we're sort of worried about in terms of fish health and such so I'll go fill up three vials of this and I'll get back to you and show you how we put the drops in. So this is the API test kit. With the test kit you get four test tubes. I've only got three filled here at the moment because that's all I'm testing for today. You get your high range pH which is a 7.4 to 8.8 and a low range pH which is a 6 to a 7.6 but I won't be using them because I have my pen. You get one bottle of a nitrite test solution. You get two bottles, an A and B of nitrate. Um, and two bottles of the ammonia. So all of these things, once you've added the drops, you let them sit for five minutes to let the colors develop. So I'll get my assistants to get five minute timer set up on my phone. Yep. So the nitrite test is the easiest one to start off with. So all it's a matter of doing is holding the little tag down, unscrewing the lid, and putting five drops into one of these test tubes. So put five drops in, I'll do it so, try and do it so you can see it and put him to one side. It's as easy as that. Then we do the nitrate. The nitrate is a little bit different. Not only is it a two bottle system, but with the second bottle it's recommended that you shake it for 30 seconds before adding the drops. I've already given it a good shake so it should be right to go. Same thing, it's got this little handy dandy tab that locks the bottle top on and this one we need to drop 10 drops of each. So that's 10 drops. a bit of a swirl around, thank you assistant, and another 10 drops, and then we'll just give this one a bit of a shake. This one gets shook for about a minute, and then left to rest for the five along with the rest. Lastly we'll do the ammonia test, this is another two part test, bottle one, bottle two, so eight of each goes into the test tube. And now we wait five minutes to see how they go. So the time is about to go off any second now. And we'll have a quick look at, here we go. We'll start with the nitrite. So the nitrite I think is around about the 0.25 parts per million there. Just looking that colour. So normally it's around about zero or trace. 
what I normally would call a trace so it has risen a little bit. Now we'll go to the ammonia. The ammonia looks to be I would say around about 0.25 to 0.5 parts per million. So probably closer to the 0.5 parts per million. So that's starting to climb up a little bit as well. And lastly we have the one that is a bit of a concern to me, the nitrates. The nitrates, while not overly toxic to fish, can be rather bad for them in high volumes. I've actually got it, I would say it's between 80 and 160 parts per million. So what I've got to look at doing is reducing the nutrient load of the water. So I have a few ideas why these nutrient levels have risen the way they have. Uh, number one being we've removed a fair bit of vegetation from the grow beds. From the grow bed on top of the sump tank we've taken out a large parsley plant that went to seed, a fair few strawberry when I thinned the bed out a bit and also the large bullshorn capsicum at the back of the bed it was removed as well. So those plants would have been using up a lot of nitrate. So in the back IBC bed we've also taken out a kohlrabi and they being leafy plants would have used up a fair bit of nutrient. So what I've done, I've already done actually, is planted a whole heap of seed in there. I've planted some carrots, some small carrots just to see how they go. A whole heap of kangkong seeds. There's four water chestnuts so once they start growing and putting in some leafy growth they'll use up the nitrates so I'm not too worried about that. It's just for the time being we've got to make sure these levels don't get too toxic. Another thing we can do is do a bit of a water change out. Our system is a 1600 litre water capacity system. I take that on fish tank and some tank. So I can put about 400 litres of fresh water in there today after I take about 400 litres out. So that's not a big problem. I can do that today and see if that lowers the readings in the next day or so. And lastly, the last thing you can do is pretty much all stop feeding the fish. Um, overfeeding fish can create too much uh, nutrients in the system. I'll feed them a couple of leafy greens every day but other than that we just lay off the um, high protein high nutrient pellets for a little while and see how that goes. So that's pretty much all it for those nutrients. Um, I'll do an update in a week or so and let you know how all that went. Um, for the pH, the pH is really easy so it's just a matter of dipping the pen, taking the cap off and dipping the pen into the water and seeing what the readings are. This pen has a little filament down in a, in a little glass ball down the bottom there and that's what actually reads the um, pH of the system. So now it's just a matter of pretty much well turning it on and putting it into the um, aquaponics. Right, well I've had this pen in the water for about 30 seconds now and the temperature is 26.1, it's hold pH is sitting around about 6.5 so obviously we need to buffer the pH as well it's having no high nutrients so what I'm going to do there previously I've used Bricky's lime when I had when it dropped really low this time I'm going to use dolomite lime which is a magnesium calcium mix and that should add extra uh, magnesium to the system as well and also raise the pH to a more neutral position. So, so I'll be adding the dolomite to the system and I'll also be draining some of the water out. It won't go to waste, it'll go straight into a wicking bed. I think I'll put it in the spice bed just behind the aquaponics here and I'll top it up with 400 litres of fresh water and I'll come back tomorrow afternoon and I'll do another reading and see how we go. I'm not too concerned, I'm also going to stop feeding the fish so I think we'll get it under control fairly quickly, especially with the new plants once they take off. Um, but it is something you really do need to keep an eye on. So any comments, questions, suggestions, drop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. If anyone has any other ideas on how they like to lower the nutrient load when it gets a bit high in their system, let us know. I'm open to any new ideas. And um, yeah, I suppose that's pretty much well it. I'll do an update clip for the whole aquaponics system in a week or so and I'll give you an update on how all the levels went and then how they're travelling at that point in time. So for now, have a great one and take it easy. Catch ya.